Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Juliet from English Prep Class and all I do on this channel is teach you tips, tricks and strategies on how you can pass your piercing test of English so you can migrate to Australia or come study in Australia or use it for your nursing registration here in Australia. Now, if you're new here, remember to hit the subscribe button. Then let's delve into this video and see what I have to say today. So in today's video, I was looking at the basic grammar rules. Now, for each game, there's always a rule. If you miss out on the rule, then you won't even score high in the game or you'll be disqualified in the game. English language has rules and some of these rules will apply to the piercing test of English and not just piercing test of English, even our daily lives, even in other English tests like the IELTS and the TOEFL and even other tests that I can't even mention, I can't remember to mention. So that's why I want to be doing this video and not only that, when I teach my students sometimes, especially in the PTE writing and the PTE reading, I see them make some kind of errors in their PTE writing. Some of them do not know how they can begin a sentence or even if they begin a sentence, they make mistakes in how the sentence is going to look. Whether simple sentence, complex sentence or compound sentence. Simple, complex, compound sentences. A lot of people make mistakes and don't know how to go about it. Sometimes too, there's a task in the piercing test of English called the reading and writing fill in the blanks and the reading fill in the blanks. Or from the reading module. What happens there is if you have basic knowledge of grammar then you'll be able to answer that task or do that task or give your response to that task. So I'm going to basically be talking about basic grammar rules that can help you even in your everyday English language or when you want to write a letter or when you want to write a test message or when you want to do those tasks in the person test of English. All right, let's just go into it right now. So remember to follow me on Instagram at English underscore prep class and on Facebook at English prep class. Try to follow me on these social media platforms. I've got important content that will help you. Just scroll down and all that and you will find something that will help you as you prepare for this exam. And like I said, these are basic grammar rules. There are many more grammar rules, but I just want to start with these basic ones that we need in our everyday transaction and not just for the piercing test of English so that everybody, my subscribers can benefit from it, not just my students, okay? So now this is the first rule. A sentence should begin with a capital letter and end with a full stop. You know, so once they've asked you to write a sentence or we want to put a group of words together, if you're not starting it with a capital letter or if you're not putting a full stop or period, like people call it, at the end of the sentence, then you have defeated the purpose. You have not followed the grammar rule. So here you can see the examples I have written. The girl visited the park in Glenville. So uh, though I started, I wrote everything in block letters, but um, really you're supposed to start it with capital letter. That's supposed to start the word T in capital letter. Then remember to put a full stop. As you can see here, I put full stops. Even this one, my cat sneaks out through the back door. I put a full stop at the end of the, this, sen this sentence here to show that, yeah, this is a sentence and I'm done with it. Okay, these are, the, these are basic things that everyone should know. I know in the IELTS, you can write all your letters or all your write, you can do your writing in block letters. But if for, for the piercing test of English, you can't do that. Yeah, because um, you have to follow the instructions. So you just have to start with the capital letter. Now, these are the reasons why I'm sharing this information here, because I'm still going to do a part two of this video where I will share more information, especially to help you pass the reading module of this exam. Now, this is another important rule here. This one says sentences must have a subject and the verb. They may have an object sometimes. I'm going to explain it. Like a simple sentence structure is um, subject, verb. Then sometimes you have SVO, subject, verb, object. Don't worry, I'm not going into so many details here. Okay, I just want to give you the basic things that you need to know so that you can write your exam or write an email to your friend or do an application and stand out in the application process. So this says Bernie cooks. So you can see the subject here is Bernie, Why cooks is the verb, that's S and V. Then like I said, they may have an object sometimes. You can see Bernie cooks potatoes every evening. So you can see here, potatoes are the objects. Yeah, so Bernie is a subject, cooks is a verb, and potatoes here is the object. So this is grammar rule two. Some sentences must have a subject, a verb, and sometimes an object. Let's look at rule number three. A singular subject must go with a singular verb. Also, a plural subject must go with a plural verb. 
Now I'm going to explain it with this example. So it doesn't look like I'm speaking a lot of grammar. Please ignore the noise at the background. Jamie lives in Sydney. And yeah, Jamie is a subject. Lives is a verb. So this is a singular, a singular verb, a singular word here, which is Jamie. And lives is a verb here. So you can see because it's just a singular subject, it's using the singular verb that has S. And yeah, Jamie, Jamie lives in Sydney. So we have here, Tracy goes to work every day. So you can still see, Tracy is a um, singular subject, goes, not Tracy go to work every day. No, once you use that word go, then you're not getting it. If this is a singular verb, goes, ES, added to go, to work every day. Why? Then look at this other one that will further um, explain this sentence here. A plural subject must go with a plural verb. It says, Jamie and Tracy live in Sydney. So, or you can say both of them live in Sydney. Now, Jamie and Tracy are plural subjects. This word and makes them plural, make, yeah, make it plural. Then here, you can see I use the word, the verb live, L-I-V-E. I didn't say lives. Now, I see sometimes people write uh, essay in some of my classes and they use the word lives when they are using plural subjects. Jamie and Tracy lives in Sydney. It's a wrong English. So um, <laughs> as you also do your thumbnails, as you do your YouTube videos, try to use the right grammar rules so that people will be more interested in watching your videos. <laughs> I was just kidding, okay? Now, rule number four, use a singular verb when two singular subjects are connected by or. Look at, I put an um, uh, inverted comma there, or, that's O-R. You can use um, singular, um, um, you can use singular verb too when you have either or slash or. This is an example to explain it. Ash or Stephen is visiting today. Ash or, this word here, or, makes it look like they're not plural. These words here are not plural. They're not plural um, subjects. They are individual subjects, singular subjects. So that is why I'm using this verb, a singular verb here. So Ash or Stephen is visiting today. Not, not if I had used and here, then I could have used are here. Because, because I'm using or, that's why I'm using is. Then this says either hot or cold is fine. So when you're using the word either, also remember to put what? Use a singular verb. So either hot or cold is fine. These are basic things that we should know. Another rule here says active voices should be used more than passive voices. And um, I'm going to just explain a bit about what these active voices mean. It says when a sentence is written in the active voice, the subject performs the action. Like Juliet is teaching. Juliet is a subject. Teaching is a verb or the action I'm performing. So that's an active voice. Or Juliet teaches PTE. So Juliet is a PTE tutor. Like I'm the one teaching. I'm carrying out the action. That's an active voice. That is how academic English wants us to write our English. Even while we write our essay or we do the task, I summarize it in test. It's important to know that. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, sorry about that. So um, this other one here says the subject receives the action if you're using passive voice. So PTE is being taught by Juliet will be passive voice because I'm not talking about the object. Then I use the verb. Then I use, um, then I, I talk about, then I also talk about the subject, which is Juliet. So um, the active voice, look at the examples here for you to be able to understand it. Fishes eat worms. That's active voice. So fishes are the subject. It is the verb. Why worm is the object. That's an active voice because um, the subject is acting on the object. Okay. Or yeah, it's carrying out the, or the subject is carrying out the action on the object. Now, worms are eaten by fishes. We can see the, the, the object is coming first. Then we can see it's going the other way. Worms are being are eaten by fishes. So it's just um, the other way around. The subject is receiving the action. That's worms are receiving the actions that's being eaten by fishes. So I said yeah, in academic writing, it is generally preferred to use an active voice. So an active voice is what is required here as you're doing this, as you do your PTE or, so, or as you write English language or even as you speak English language, it is preferred to use active voices to do that. And this is the last rule I'm going to be doing in this first video. And I'm going to bring you part two of this video, and it will be more specific to um, the PTE or any other English exam that you want to write. This says, 
the word ITS, it's an IT apostrophe S and not the same. Also, the word your, Y O U R, and your are not the same. Look at the spellings here so you don't confuse. That's why you need to watch this video. <laughs> you don't just have to hear it, watch it and see what I'm doing. Now, let's look at an example here, or let's look at the example so I can further explain it. The dog has horse its tail. If I, if I put the apostrophe one, the one, this one here that has apostrophe and S, the English will not be right or the grammar will not be correct. It will be the dog has hot, it is still, or it has still, you know, which is not the right word to speak. Yeah, it's been a wonderful day. So it can be, it has been a wonderful day, but I decided to shorten it this way. These things are called contractions. I said to shorten it this way just to, um, just to boost my writing skills, you know, it's been a wonderful day. Then this one, that's not your, my, that's not my car. That's your car. You see, this one is like um, pronounced your car. Okay. You can see where it is used. Your, Y-O-U. Then the second one says, thank you so much. You're the best. You are the best. So we decided to shorten it like this. We use the word, the contraction here, just to shorten our writing. And we're still getting this. So if I decide not to use, if I'm going to be writing the PT essay, I will not use contractions. I'll rather say you are, Y-O-U space A-R-E, the best. In academic writing, you don't actually use contractions, except maybe in the IELTS um, um, informal letter, you can use it. But in the Pearson test of English, everything is just too formal. In the Pearson test of English, you have to be professional when you do this. So these are the first grammar rules I'm sharing here. Now, go through these rules and take corrections of the words you have not been using rightly. Or uh, if you've been speaking in passive voice, go through these rules and try to do use more of active voices because it's going to help you as you do your emails, as you send messages to people, you're going to sound like a professional English speaker. I know we are not native English speakers, but we've come a long way, you know? So let's try to speak that right English. Let's do right, let's use the right grammar rules. So guys, so those are the basic grammar rules I want to talk about. Now, this is the part one of this video. Yes, I'm going to be doing the part two. Now, the part two will be specific to the reading and writing fill in the blanks and the reading fill in the blanks in the piercing reading module. I'm going to be specific, showing you what to do if you see a blank or what comes after a blank or what should be there before a blank. That's the next one I'm going to do. But for this one, uh, I hope you're able to enjoy this video and able to relate to the content of this video. And I hope this video has helped you today um, so you can write a better essay or be able to do other tasks or write even a test message to your friends. Okay, guys. So remember to hit the subscribe button if you're new here. And remember to follow me on Instagram at English underscore prep class and on Facebook at prep class. My page is going to help you if you want to learn basic English or you want to write the Pearson test of English especially. Remember to follow me and you won't regret following me on this channel. I'll see you in my next video, guys. Bye.